You know, sometimes even a bad director can make a good movie. Hey everyone, welcome to their top 10 list. Welcome to my top 10 good movies by bad directors. Yes, like I said in the opening, sometimes a terrible director can make a good movie. And I'm here to celebrate that with this top 10 list. This is the top, top 10 good movies that are made by bad directors. Yes, these directors are usually all known for making awful, terrible movies, but... Occasionally, they make a good movie, and that good movie deserves some celebration because, again, they are awful directors, but they always have that one or even that two good movies they made. And you know what? It's just like spitting luck. It's like, oh my god, how the fuck did they do it? But you know what? Again, like I said, it deserves some celebration, and I'm here to celebrate that with my top 10 good movies by bad directors. All right, let's get to it. Coming at number 10 is Live Free or Die Hard, directed by Len Wiseman. Len Wiseman is not a good director. Not at all. He's made some shitty movies. He made the Underworld movies, which I have like a guilty pleasure for. Not all of them, but a few of them. But all in all, his movies are critical duds. But uh, Live Fear Die Hard is a good movie. Like, uh, it's a movie a lot of Die Hard fans don't like because it's not an R-rated Die Hard movie. It's not the yippee ki motherfuckers. The, you know, the Die Hard that we all know and love. It's as good as the first one, and it's definitely not even as good as Die Hard with a Vengeance, but it is the third best Die Hard movie, and it's still fun, action-packed. Bruce Willis is back kicking ass. Even Justin Long is a good sidekick, and I like Timothy Oliphant as the villain. He's a hacker villain. He's not like that badass terrorist villain. He's an actual smart intellectual villain, and it's a villain that I do like, and this is a Die Hard movie that I do enjoy. They should have ended the franchise with this, instead of with this shitty Die Hard 5 and good day to die hard, more like a good day to eat shit and fucking die. But yeah, Len Wiseman is not a good filmmaker, but he at least made a good die hard movie and a good movie, and I like it. Coming to number nine is The Patriot, uh, directed by Roland Emmerich. Uh, a lot of people should realize that I freaking can't stand Roland Emmerich. I don't think he's a good filmmaker. I hate his disaster movies like the freaking Stargate, the Godzilla, Day After Tomorrow, 2012. They're stupid movies, and I don't like Independence Day. The first one, second one, I don't, I'm not an Independence Day fan. And I don't think he's, he's a good filmmaker. I hate it. White House Down. There's another stupid movie. I don't like his movies. But The Patriot, for some strange reason, I really enjoy it. I think it's a good movie. I I'm actually believe that this isn't Roland Emmerich. I believe he put his name on it. I believe someone else directed it, and he just put his name on it. Like, I don't know. No, nothing about this movie feels like Roland Emmerich's movies. It actually feels like a good, enjoyable war movie, and I like it. Mel Gibson's very good in this movie. Uh, Heath Ledger's very good in the movie. A lot of the performances are really good. The battle sequences are very well done. It's very well paced and executed and even directed. I like this movie. And again, Roland Emmerich is a very silly, over-the-top director, and there's nothing silly or over-the-top about this movie. It's a very enjoyable, period-piece war movie, and who would have thought Roland Emmerich directed it? It's his only good movie, but it's good. Coming to number eight is The Rock, directed by Michael Bay. Yes, Michael Bay... He's a shitty director. I am not a Michael Bay fan either. Some people have this guilty pleasure for Michael Bay. That's fine. I'm not one of those people. I don't like pain and gain and stuff. The Transformers movies are awful movies. Even when he produces a horror movie or a Ninja Turtles movie, it's garbage. I don't like Armageddon or The Island or anything like that. 13 Hours was okay, but I wouldn't even call it that great. The Rock is actually a very good, fun, entertaining action movie. Nicolas Cage is great. Sean Connery, come on. We're we'll just go home and fuck the prom queen. It's so good. It's so over the top, but it's actually a lot of fun. I love these soldiers taking over Alcatraz, these terrorists. It's up to Nick Cage and fucking Sean Connery to stop these guys. You got Michael Biehn and Ed Harris in the film. The storyline's ridiculous, but it works. The writing is cheesy, but it works. The performances, again, are over the top, but they work. The Rock is just this weird, strange action movie that works. There's even a lot of shaky cam and quick cuts, which is something I hate, but it works. It's a good movie. 
Coming number seven is Cliffhanger and Die Hard 2, directed by Rennie Harlan. Rennie Harlan did two good movies. Good job, Rennie. Yay, you still suck. Yeah, Rennie Harlan has made a lot of terrible action movies. Legend of Hercules is one of them. Like, he is not a good director. But Die Hard 2, not a good movie, but it is a fun, entertaining movie. Again, with Cliffhanger, it's not a great movie. But they're both very fun movies. And that's what I thought Rennie Harlan was going to do throughout his whole filmography. Not make great movies, but make fun, cheesy, silly, over-the-top action movies. And he failed. He failed to do that. His movies suck. But these two are really fun. Dire 2 is fun. It's kind of a rip-off of the first one, but in an airport. But it still works. Bruce Willis is great. Richard Alvell Johnson's in it. He's great. The scenarios and bloody action is really fun to watch. Cliffhanger, again, a silly premise, but still Alone is so good and entertaining. It's even very well shot. The action's a lot of fun. You got John Lithgow in the movie. He's great. They're, they're silly action movies, but they're silly action movies that work. Coming number six is Brett Ratner, Red Dragon. Yes, Red Dragon was directed by Brett Ratner, and yeah, this is a good movie. Uh, I know everyone's like, like pissed off already. They're like, wait a minute. Brett Ratner's not that bad. He did the Rush Hour movies. Okay, I can admit, the Rush Hour movies aren't great, but they're a lot of fun. They're funny. Rush Hour 1 and 2, not the third one, but the first two are very enjoyable movies. I Yes, I can admit that. I have fun with the Rush Hour movies, but the actual great movie Brett Ratner did was Red Dragon. The rest of his movies suck. Like, the Rush Hour movies are fun, but other than Red Dragon... His movies are atrocious. They're such shitty movies. He did one of the worst superhero movies of all time with X-Men 3 and stuff. And Red Dragon was great. And it's a remake of Manhunter. And it actually ended up being better than Manhunter. Anthony Hawkins returns to the role of Hannibal Lecter. And he's really good. Edward Norton's fantastic. And I love the scenario, the story. I love the story of the Red Dragon, played by Red Fines and stuff. It's a disturbing, unsettling story, but it works. It's no Silence of the Lambs, but it's still a very good movie. The only time I actually see this storyline done even better was in the show Hannibal with uh, Hugh Dancy and Mads Mikkelsen. That's fantastic. They do the Red Dragon storyline in Season 3, and it's actually done better than Red Dragon. But Red Dragon itself is a great film, and Brett Ratner, shitty filmmaker, but did a good job. Coming number five is Speed, directed by Jean DuPont. Yes, Jean DuPont is another shitty filmmaker, a lot of shitty B-movies, shitty dramas and stuff. He got lucky with Speed. Yeah, he did the fucking Speed 2 cr Cruise Control. Good job, buddy. Speed is a great movie. It's uh, Die Hard on a Bus, and it's great. It's so fun, so entertaining. Keanu Reeves is fantastic. Sandra Bullock as the Wildcat. Tell that Wildcat to slow down. She's great. I love uh, Dennis Hopper as the silly villain. He's great. Uh, Jeff Daniels is really good. I love the scenario in the beginning when they're just saving the people from the elevator shaft. This is a really good movie. It's really entertaining. It's an action thrill ride. I love it. It's just a fun action movie, and yeah, I love speed. Coming number four is A Christmas Story and Black Christmas, directed by Bob Clark. Bob Clark, again, is another filmmaker. I don't like his movies. Some people love most of Bob Clark's films. I do not. I don't think his movies are very good. But for some strange reason, when he does Christmas movies, he knocks out of the park. Christmas Story is great, and Black Christmas is really great. And they're both very different movies, but he directed them both. A Christmas, a Christmas Story is a classic film. It's so funny. It's so timeless. I watch it every Christmas. Black Christmas, I do not watch every Christmas, but it is a very creepy, unsettling Canadian horror movie, and it invented, like, the stalker horror movie. Like, this Black Christmas inspired When a Stranger Calls, uh, Halloween and stuff. It inspired a lot of horror films, and they're both very good movies. Again, Bob Clark, not a good director, but when he does Christmas movies, he knocks out of the park. Coming number three is Happy Gilmore, directed by Dennis Dugan. Oh, my God, Dennis Dugan. All, like, the worst Adam Sandler movies you can think of are all directed by Dennis Dugan. Like, your Jack and Jill's and Just Go With It's Dennis Dugan. But for, yeah, he knocked it out of the park with Happy Gilmore. This is, like, his only good movie, Happy Gilmore. It's a really funny movie. And even some people actually don't even like this movie, but I think Happy Gilmore is so funny. This is like this rare gem Adam Sandler, Dennis Dugan movie that just worked. It just worked. I don't know how it worked, but it did. It's 
funny. It's really funny. Like, I love the villain Shooter McGavin. I love the cameo of Bob Barker. And I think Adam Sandler is really funny in this movie. It was a one-time deal. It was a one-time hit. But still, it was funny. Coming number two was Donnie Darko, directed by Richard Kelly. Richard Kelly, again, what a smart filmmaker. In Donnie Darko, yes, like, the rest of his movies are not very good. I wouldn't say they're bad, they're just very generic, very forgettable films. Especially following up after Donnie Darko, it's a very disappointing filmography. I love Donnie Darko. Donnie Darko is such a brilliant, smart, thought-provoking, edgy, sick, weird, twisted movie. I love it. I love Jake Gyllenhaal in the movie. I love Jenna Malone, Patrick Swayze, Drew Barrymore. The whole cast is fantastic. Even the small role of Seth Rogen as the bully. So funny. The movie is so crazy, twisted, weird, and so smart and brilliant. You just can't watch it once. You have to watch it multiple times and make your own theories about it. It's just so good. What Richard Kelly did with Donnie Darko was amazing. Too bad he just never did that ever again. But Donnie Darko, still amazing. And the number one great movie directed by bad directors is The Empire Strikes Back, directed by Irving Kirshner. Yes, Empire, it, it, this is very hard for me to say because Empire Strikes Back is not only an amazing masterpiece film, and it's a Star Wars movie, but it's one of my favorite movies of all time. The Empire Strikes Back is like my second favorite movie of all time. It's so amazing. Irving Kirshner is a great director for Empire Strikes Back, but apparently that's it. The rest of his movies suck. How does this happen? How did that happen? Empire Strikes Back just blew me away. It blew everyone away, every Star Wars fan away. It's so fucking amazing. It's visuals, it's storytelling, how the characters are introduced and how they're portrayed. It's just so amazing. Star Wars was an amazing movie, but Empire was even better with its storytelling, its action, and its thrills, and its thought-provoking meaning and stuff. How you meet these new, interesting characters like Lando and Yoda. It is so good. It's so smartly and tightly well-directed. How the hell did Earl Kushner never make it a good movie again? I don't know how that's possible, but Empire Strikes Back is one of the greatest movies of all time, and unfortunately, Aaron Kushner is not a good director, though. So yeah, that was my top 10 good movies directed by bad directors. Yes, look forward to my next list when I'll be talking about the top 10 bad movies by good directors. So yeah, in the comment section below, please tell me what are 10 good movies directed by bad directors in your opinion and stuff. Give me your thoughts and opinions in the comment section below. Comment below, let me know. And as always, if you like this video, please like, subscribe to this channel and join the dark side.